Hey guys and welcome to Functional Print Friday. So what I have on the workbench this week is an electric engraver. And I inherited this from either my uncle or my grandfather, probably my grandfather. And uh, all I can tell you about it is that it has 7,200 strokes per minute, includes a six foot cord, and I am terrible at using it. And that said, I don't know that anyone is good at using these things. If you've never seen one of these or never used one before, uh, all it is is just a little handheld device with a sharp carbide tip in it and you plug it into the wall and turn it on and this little tip vibrates around really really fast apparently 7200 strokes per minute and you move it around like you kind of write with it like a pencil and it'll actually engrave into material uh, you can do plastic metal um, even fairly hard metal since that's a, a carbide tip on there but it is really hard to control. Here, let me plug it in and we'll try and engrave something. Yeah, I just realized there's actually like a piece of paper or something in here. Maybe it's got more information about this thing. Maybe I'm using it wrong. How to use your new Craftsman electric engraver with replaceable tip. Sold by Sears Roebuck and Company, Chicago, Illinois. And no date. I was kind of hoping maybe we'd have a date. I have no idea how old this thing is, but... Uh, yeah, let's see. Printed in USA, one-year guarantee. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're past that. And actually, the whole thing is made in the USA, so that right there tells me that this is pretty old because um, we haven't made anything like this in the U.S. for a long time. Uh, good news is you can still buy these. In fact, uh, not a made in USA one, but uh, I'm sure one that works just as well since this is such a simple device. They're like 12 bucks. Um, or less, maybe even if you look around. Unless you want the blue one, then it's 30. All right, this is just a scrap of aluminum. This is pretty soft metal, so this should be pretty easy for this to engrave. And uh, let's see, I'll try and make a circle. And I'll probably have to turn the sound way down because this thing is really loud when you turn it on. All right, I guess that's actually not a terrible circle. Um, normally I'm writing with it, like I'll put my initials on something and it's just, it's really, really hard to uh, to keep like, actually, you know what? Let me, let me try and make some straight lines parallel to each other. That's probably a better test. All right, I guess that actually didn't go uh, terribly bad. Doesn't look great, but it's honestly better than I expected to do. Let me try writing something out. Yeah, it looks okay. I mean, I can definitely read what it says. I'm sure you can too. Uh, this is the best I could do to keep straight and keep the same size. And we still ended up kind of going up at an angle and getting smaller on this end. And it's hard to explain. If you've never used one of these before, it's just constantly trying to vibrate out of your hand. It is, it's really hard to, uh, to stay on track for uh, drawing something or, you know, doing lettering. And the idea I had was what if we used 3D printing to make some custom stencils? For this. I haven't seen anyone do this. I did a YouTube search. I did a Google search. The closest I can find is there are some of these engravers that are sold with stencils that let you do lettering, which, I mean, it seems pretty easy. Uh, but what if we wanted to do like logos or shapes or other stuff like that? Would it work? I don't know. Let's try it. All right. I whipped this up to test and it's probably beefier than it needs to be. I made this three millimeters thick, which is probably overkill. Now that I'm holding it in my hand, although it's pretty still fairly flexible, but it doesn't seem too flexible in the direction that I think it is going to try and move in when we use it. I have no idea what's going to happen here. This thing might just melt. Um, I imagine there's going to be quite a bit of friction with that carbide tip vibrating around so much. So I guess let's try it. All right, that worked. It's not great. I think I was going too fast. Uh, I don't know how close I can get to the lens with this and it's still focused, but it's just a whole bunch. This isn't too bad here, but this just looks like a whole bunch of just points. Let me see if I can line it up and try it again and just slow down. All 
It's actually kind of hard to go slower with it. It's hard to describe, I think, just the way it vibrates. But going over it multiple times seemed to work pretty well. I got kind of stuck down here in the corner. I don't know if maybe there was a spot that was a little deep from the first time I went over it, but that's not, it's not terrible. I, there's no way I could freehand that. I mean, I guess we probably could have done it with a ruler. I don't think we would have had corners quite as clean. It would have been really hard to start and stop in exactly the right spot. But um, yeah, I mean, I want to I want to keep going with this. Let's try something a bit more complex, and I want to try a couple different thicknesses. This definitely felt too thick. This was hard to use. I'd like to see if we can go with a thinner stencil and still have it work. Let me go think about a couple things, and I'll bring you guys back. Okay, I made three different prints here, and looking at these, this might be too small. But I did one in, so I did my FPF logo, and I did one in, at one millimeter thick, one at 1.5 millimeters thick, and one at two millimeters thick. And I didn't realize until I printed these how thin some of these sections were. So that might be, yeah, I don't know. Um, let's try it. The other thing I'm realizing holding this is, this is probably going to be really hard to hold on to. I probably should have made the stencil itself uh, like just a lot bigger, just have sort of like blank material out here. I think it would give me a lot more to hold on to. This is going to be tricky to hold on to and use the engraver at the same time, I think. Okay, that's not working. Um, it's just, it's too thin. As soon as I started to try and draw that line, it bowed down. And what's worse is I don't think the other ones are gonna work either. I think I probably would need to have these gaps bigger, but let's try it. Let's try the, let's see, was this the thinnest one? Yeah, that was the thinnest one. Let's try the 1.5. Yeah, that's a big fail. On the one millimeter, you can see it doesn't even quite go all the way through these thin slots at the end. It, the, where the letters are, those are big enough, but it's too flimsy. Um, when I'm making the letters, the plastic is just bending. So I don't think we're gonna be able to engrave this small, or if we did, I think we'd have to spend more time with the stencil. Maybe go thicker, but taper uh, the channels to follow the, uh, the taper of the, the carbide uh, tip here at the end. Let's try something bigger. All right, found a piece of what I think is just mild steel. Looks like it's painted on this side and I whipped up something a little bit bigger that has some larger gaps and I made this two millimeters thick. I think two millimeters thick is probably the sweet spot, um, but let's try it. Huh. It's weird. I don't remember actually printing anything on my A1. Well, that's new. All right, all kidding aside, I did just want to quickly mention there is an actual problem with the heat bed cable on these Bamboo Lab A1 printers. And many of you alerted me to it in the comments section of last week's video, and thank you for doing that. I was aware of the issue, but I thought it was more limited than it really is. I, I, as I understood it, there was an issue with the, uh, the strain relief here where this heat bed cable comes back down into the base of the machine. And it sounded initially like some people, when they assembled these, had set the machine down on that strain relief and damaged it. And to be fair, that should not damage the strain relief. It's not a good idea. I wouldn't recommend it, but that should not cause damage to the strain relief. But in fact, I've since found out that not only is the strain relief just shorter than it should be, but the process that they use to crimp this with heat, I guess, um, melted some of the cables. And even ones that have no damage to the strain relief at all. There's a handful out there that have actually melted and failed. I don't think any have actually caught fire yet, but I, I mean, yeah, you should probably stop using your Bamboo Lab A1 until you're able to get a replacement heat bed cable. And if you don't want to wait for it, you can get a full refund on the machine. Go to their website. If you've purchased one of these and you're not aware of this issue until you're hearing about it in this video, go up to the Bamboo Lab website. Um, there's a link on there and you'll be able to select, you'll, be, you'll put your serial number for your machine and you, you'll, you'll either be able to select 
returning the machine for a full refund or waiting until they ship you a replacement heat bed cable. And then I think they're providing a nice store credit as well for your time to replace that heat bed cable. And that's the option that I went with. I don't think they're shipping them until sometime in March. I, I don't have an exact date yet, but when I do get my heat bed cable, I'll probably do a video here on the channel of replacing it. It doesn't sound like it's gonna be super complicated, but I don't think it's gonna be real easy either because I imagine we're probably gonna to have to take the gantry back off this printer, disassemble the base, and disassemble the heat bed, at least partially, to get the actual electrical connections disconnected on both ends of this cable uh, to get that whole unit replaced. All right, let's try this. All right, that is just about impossible to see, but I don't think that is our stencil's fault. I think this is spring steel and not, uh, and not mild steel, so it's actually quite hard. Let me go find something else. All right, found another piece of uh, scrap aluminum. Let's try this. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. That is not bad. There is no way that I could have freehanded that. And I mean, it's not perfect. You know, we have gaps in here where we had to have solid plastic to hold, uh, for example, the B. You know, we have, we have to add these pieces in here to hold the center section of the letter, but there's no reason you couldn't have more than one stencil. So you start with say this one, then you have a second stencil where these pieces that hold the center of the B on are on, on the other side. You know, you position it at the, at the tip of the B over here and on the sides, like the top and the bottom, instead of where they are now. And you could either eliminate that one or slide it forward. Uh, line this back up on here and then go over it again with your sort of, you know, part two stencil. So if you had a much more complex design, you might even have two or three different stencils to get the whole thing on there. Uh, but they would be consistent and it would look professional versus, you know, just a child drawing something on a piece of metal. So, yeah, I mean, I think really the sky is the limit with this. And this one I checked. I, I wasn't sure if this was one and a half or two millimeters thick. This one is one and a half millimeters thick. I think this is definitely the sweet spot from a thickness perspective. And the gap here where the carbide tip is riding in is also one and a half millimeters. So easy to remember, you want a one and a half millimeter gap in your stencil. Uh, for the carbide tip to ride in and you want to go one and a half millimeters thick at least for the tip on this one But I think this is pretty standard the ones that I saw online the uh, the carbide tipped uh, Ones at least looked very much the same as this and do get one with a carbide tip that one I showed earlier that was like 11 or 12 bucks that has a carbide tip So just you know, don't buy one that has some sort of other tip uh, carbide is what's going to allow you to engrave harder materials and yeah, we didn't do so great in that spring steel but I think if I pushed harder or if we went over it a couple times, we'd still have a result at least similar to, uh, to this guy here. All right, well, for a proof of concept, I'm gonna call that successful. And I think this is just one for the toolbox. I can't think of anything that I have that I'm working on right now that I really need to use this for, but I know the process works and I know I can repeat it. Um, just as an example, like let's say I was remaking a part for a machine that needed to have a bunch of, uh, you know, lines in a particular direction, maybe, you know, to set an angle, um, and then some numbers as well, I wouldn't even attempt freehanding that. There's no way that's gonna go well. But if I was willing to take the time to create the stencil for it and 3D print it out, and, you know, I could even have like a guide that followed the edge of the material or something, um, you know, I'd be fairly confident that I could get a good result. And really the sky's the limit for this. I mean, these are just simple flat stencils that I use to test this, but there's no reason these wouldn't work on a curve. I mean, this one would work just as is, you know, for a fairly mild curve. But like I could think years ago, I had one of those big D-cell mag light flashlights uh, that's got like a you know, probably an inch and a half barrel on it. And I tried to carve my initials on it with this thing. And yeah, it looked like an orangutan did it. And that, would, that stencil would take some more time to make. We'd have to do it as a cylinder and the, the letters would have to follow the curve of the cylinder and, and have a consistent depth throughout. But if you took the time to make that, there's no reason you wouldn't have, um, you know, lettering or whatever design you wanted on that, that curved object uh, just as nice as our test here on a flat object. Well, guys, as always, thanks for hanging out in the shop with me for this week's video. And if you want to try this on your own and you're too lazy to make up some stencils, I'll put STLs for these two 
uh, on my site, fpfdesigns.com, where we put all the STLs for any of the things that we make on this channel. And I'll link that down in the description of the video as well, so you can just click on it and not have to type that in. And if this is your first time on the channel, I do a new functional print every single week, every Friday. So if you're into that sort of thing, check out some of the other videos on the channel. And if you see stuff you like, hit that subscribe button. Guys, if you do, I'll see you next Friday. <laughs>